Coach. Well, first of all, it's uh, I want to uh, congratulate Bowling Green and and uh, you know their coaches came to our locker room. He's a class act and uh, great AD there in a, in a program that's doing the same things we're doing, trying to to get it where it needs to be. So very similar, but uh, you know we're uh, you know certainly excited for uh, our program. Uh, we're we're very excited for Las Cruces and our fans and the people back there that. Uh, you know, I said it'd take a village, and we're far from where we need to be yet. But, uh, and I'm shocked in some ways. But, uh, you know, congratulations to all the people that have helped us get where we're at. But the most important people that deserve the credit is the players. Uh, what they've gone through being 0 4, playing three Power Five conference teams, uh, you know, the ups and downs, the tough moments. They truly, uh, uh, in my mind, uh, is what life's all about. These are life lessons these kids should never forget because they were down, they got back up, they were down, they got backed up. They listened. They listened to the coaches. They listened to me on this is how we're doing it, this is what we're going to do, and they never quit believing in each other and the coaching staff. That does not happen in this day and age. And, uh, you know, frankly, you know, I'll remember this bunch because I don't think there's any bunch that I've ever seen get every ounce out of the talent they have, period. I mean, we got kids that, that uh, uh, are doing things they didn't think they could do. And uh, that's a credit to those kids. And, and as I said, going an extra yard today, it was going to take an extra yard. And uh, so congratulations to the kids. And um, it's great to see them smile. It's great to see the seniors go out with a, a W. and. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, I think that uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna enjoy this a little bit. I don't think we've been in very very many bowl games here. I, I think you can kind of tell the way we acted after the bowl game. Uh, we haven't been in very many bowl games and won, but uh, you know who cares at that point? You know, you're just glad that uh, you see kids smile that haven't smiled for a long time. So with that, any questions? Oh, that's the, that represents the, the state of Mex you know, New Mexico. That was given to me after uh, the New Mexico win, uh, you know, and uh, as a, a gift. And uh, I think everybody thought that, you know, oh, coach, you need the gift, he'll put it. You know, that's, that's the pride of our state. And uh, I said, hey, I'm in Detroit, and I'm going to show them that, uh, what our culture is all about. And that, that represents our culture and represents our people. So. I proudly wear that, and uh, warm up. huh? Warm up. Oh, absolutely. Those things are really warm. You know, I'll work on. I'll see if I can get you one made if you'd like, because they're warm. You, you need them here in Detroit. I can tell you that, because I've lived in this area. You, I mean, you just you won the bowl game. You had a great year, but like, like you said, you're a little surprised. Like, what is, what is next? I mean, you had a great signing class the other day. Like, what do you think is next now that you're just getting started? Oh, we're we're going we're going to continue to improve. You know, there's no doubt about that. We'll continue to, you know, to get better. But, you know, it's a whole different team next year, and a whole different. Can they have the same type of culture? Can they have the same type, you know, what this team had? You just don't know. Uh, but uh, I said it'd get you know take three or four years to get where we want. And that's the same thing I'll say right now. This is not. This is stepped us way ahead, but at the same time, it's not way ahead. I, there's a lot of kinks in the armor that have to be fixed. And we're going into Conference USA, which we're very excited about, you know, uh, to get into a conference. And, and um, you know, uh, you know I, this should help us. Uh, the Conference USA should feel a lot better about New Mexico State right now coming into the conference, which I think is very important. Well, you know, a lot of that has to do with our offensive coordinator and my comrade for 40 years. Actually, coached him, Tim Beck, and uh, you know, he he, he just uh, you know dialed up some good stuff on third down, and then uh, you know, uh, uh, Diego uh, drives me crazy sometimes. And uh, but when it comes down to winning, you know, he finds a way to win. And the last couple of runs he made. Towards the end, were flat unbelievable. He just threw his body out there, and 
I mean, he takes hits, you know, but he's also a state champion wrestler, so that may have something to do with that. I don't think he has a conscience sometimes, but uh, that's good and bad, by the way. Well, you know, I, you know, coach said all along, you know, that that uh, that uh, hey, if you're going, you know, beat New Mexico State, you got to stop the run. You got to stop the run. They're going to run the ball, stop the run. So we came out with a little different philosophy and threw the ball around a little bit more than we usually do. But at the end of the day, you still got to be able to run the ball to win. And uh, you know, we our physical backs ran physical, and then uh, uh, you know, anybody wants to see somebody run ten four, they just seen it, you know, and. Uh, uh, he's, um, I'm on, you know, he, and he ran hard. We haven't, I have not seen that. He's true freshman or not red shirt freshman, but I haven't seen him put his pads down like that period. And, uh, so he came age a day, just running physical. Was that something that you took advantage of that extra time, getting him more confidence? Because I mean, today was the most carries he's had on the season. Well, I, I think it really just way the work, the game worked out and what we we're doing. But, uh, you know, uh, coach G does a great job with those kids and, uh, you know, they're paddling. I mean, we have a great coaching staff. I'm sitting up here talking to y'all. It's all about who you hire. And I've hired a good coaching staff. And, you know, uh, I've always had a good coaching staff. And uh, that's why we've been successful. You mentioned, uh, oh, sorry. You mentioned Coach, that, um, you know, you kind of downplayed it in the trophy ceremony about winning your first bowl game ever at the FBS level. Um, but is it kind of special to do it at a place like New Mexico State that's kind of embraced you and well, again, I, I downplay a little bit is it just the fact that, you know, co the programs that we've taken over have been difficult programs. I've never been able to walk into one that just had it all out there, you know, probably because nobody would hire me, you know. Uh, but uh, when I got hired, you know, I proved that we could get it done. And uh, so uh, nothing's been easy in my life. And uh, I was here uh, with Tracy Clays, and uh, I was not the head coach, but – uh, I was, you know, that day was a big day in my life at my University of Minnesota. That was the last day I walked off this field, and we did win. And I was a part of it, and he let me be a part of it. Didn't have to, but we've been friends at like 80 young odd years. So to come back and uh, at New Mexico State and do it, it's it's uh, icing on the cake. Because I think most people said, you know, that, uh, and it's okay. I mean, I thought I was too. But uh, a lot of people said that I'd never be back and never be able to be a head coach again. And, you know, I have epilepsy. I still have issues from time to time. And I'm coaching football. So I want that to be a message to all the people that have disabilities. You know, hey, don't give up on chasing your dreams and keep fighting because you never know what happens. And you run into an athletic director that doesn't really care what your disability is. He knows you can win. And that's why Mario hired me. And that's why I came, because I trusted him and uh, his team. And uh, otherwise, I'd have never got this chance anyway. So really, uh, you know, I owe Mario uh, maybe my life and career, because I got that chance. And for people that didn't think I could do it, well, we're here. And, uh, and I did it the same way I've done it all my life, with good coaches and good people. But I thank Mario for, you know, helping me extend what I love to do. You know, as my brother said, you'll never retire, you'll just be expired. I think that pretty sums me up pretty good. Coach McDonald goes down in the first quarter. Did you tell your defense to pin their ears back and go for it? Or did you want to wait a little bit and see the fourth pad? Or maybe see if Bowling Green was going to change the game time a little bit? Well, you know, you know, he there's a lot of change when you get a quarterback, so there's a lot of field back process. So, you know, I think defensively you know, we had to get a feel for what they were going to do. Uh, Coach Dryling's done a, you know, you'd have to look at the stats where we were a year ago defensively and where we're at now. Uh, his, his, and him and his staff's done a great job. And, um, you know, you really look at how we played defense today. We played good defense. That's why we won. We sure didn't, we sure didn't win the kicking game. That's for damn sure, you know. And I'm not going to bring that up right now because then I'll be in a bad mood. But it will never happen again. I can promise you that as long as I coach. I will never put up with that. Crap. Anyway, uh, 
Well, you know, offensive line wise, we got two seniors. We got a redshirt freshman, true freshman, sophomore, and you know, we there's no doubt people we struggled in the offensive line. And what he's done has made the offensive line better, and uh, and and they've gotten confidence. You know, so it's been kind of a unique situation. And he wasn't that confident early in the year, but we just stayed with what we believe in and with kids, and I think they appreciate that. And but uh, his ability to you know. To do what he does, I mean, like I said, he just shakes you, shake your head, and all of a sudden you got a first down, you clap your hands, great job, great job, like you draw it up. No, we didn't draw it up that way. He just made a play. So, yeah, he, he was a big key in, in the first half with what he did with his feet and his arm. And he has a knack of seeing the field and throwing it or running it. Not you know, So it uh, doesn't come often like that. But what makes him, he's tough. I mean, he take, I mean, he takes some brutal hits. and. I guess he's so hard headed that he you know, he can handle it. I don't wanna I don't wanna put you in a bad mood. But like he really had a good cup first couple of punts and then, you know, he struggled as the game went on. Is that kind of No, he didn't struggle, the protection struggle. Protection struggle. Oh hell. Opened up like the Red Sea. Poor coaching. Won't happen again. So you put me in a bad mood whether you wanted to or not. Merry Christmas to you too. <laughs> I love you too, but anyway, bad question. Well, I think that our kids, uh, I think coach-wise, the whole thing is I stepped in the offensive huddle and said, hey, you know, I want everybody's attention. And uh, I said, everybody needs to relax. We're fine. You know, take a deep breath. Diego, slow your, your calls down. O-line, pay attention. Receivers, you know, let's chill out a little bit. And they did. And certainly on that last drive, that's you know that was the message. But uh, you know you can't as as a coach you can't show panic at all. You know now I threw my headsets down, but that was over something else. But you but as a as a team you can't show you know as a coach you can't show panic in that situation. So if you do, the kids do. So I think they they came back down to earth when we came back down to earth. Uh, thank you, guys. We'll bring some players down here in a second. Thank you.